It's 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV. I'm Derek Gilbert with five things you need to know for this Tuesday, August 27th, 2024. Item number five today, life isn't fair. Not telling you anything you don't already know. It's just something we kind of need to accept. Case in point, new study shows that after abandoning Joe Biden, you know, the president that the corporate media told us for years was perfectly fine and any criticisms of, of his cognitive abilities were simply right-wing conspiracy theories. Well, they thrown him under the bus and suddenly the media is now unapologetically promoting Kamala Harris. She is now transformed miraculously from six weeks ago where she was the most unpopular vice president in history to the, the savior of democracy. The media showing Kamala Harris with 84% positive coverage. This is according to a new survey or new study done by the Media Research Center. Donald Trump getting 89% negative coverage. Now, again, this is no surprise. We've seen this with Donald Trump since 2016. Uh, but on top of the difference in tone, they're also giving Harris a lot more airtime than Trump. This is, this is a change because going back to 2015, Trump nearly always was given more airtime than his competitors. He received three times more coverage than Joe Biden in 2020, in part because Biden was hiding in his basement. He wasn't actually getting in front of any cameras. But uh, during the last four weeks, the networks have given more airtime, 66% more to Kamala Harris. 221 minutes of time during the ABC, NBC, CBS evening news reports and uh, Trump getting about 133 minutes. Now, this despite the fact that Donald Trump came literally within inches of death just six weeks ago on July 13th. You'd think, you would think that corporate media would show a little more interest in the investigation as to how the Secret Service failing occurred that very nearly took the life of a former president of the United States. But you would be wrong. In addition, most Democratic voters are just unaware of how radical Kamala Harris actually is. Another Media Research Center poll finds that large majorities of Democratic voters, voters who cast ballots of Democrat and independents who voted for Joe Biden in 2020, the people you would expect to vote for Kamala Harris in 2024, don't really know what her positions are on radical issues. For example, uh, when asked about 10 different aspects of Harris's public record, like her support, co-sponsorship of the Green New Deal, abolishing immigrations and customs enforcement, eliminating private health insurance altogether, between 71 and 86 percent of Democratic and independent voters, voters who cast ballots for Joe Biden four years ago, either didn't know or were unaware, had not heard of her positions on these issues. The media is completely rehabilitating and gilding her image to try to push her across the finish line in 2024. Now, again, there's no point in complaining about this. We know that media is stacked against Donald Trump, typically stacked against conservative candidates, period, but especially Trump because he is an outsider. He is not accepted by the deep state in Washington, D.C. I'm just making you aware of this to help all of us understand why our friends and family members who don't pay as much attention to the news probably have a much better impression of Kamala Harris than you and I do. Topic number four, oh, uh, the war on free speech. Two stories here. First, Mark Zuckerberg, CEO of Facebook, rather remarkably Monday night, sent a letter to House Judiciary Chairman Jim Jordan admitting that senior Biden administration officials repeatedly pressured Facebook teams to suppress information related to the pandemic that the public, uh, the platform rather, Facebook, would not otherwise have censored, and that the administration expressed, quote, a lot of frustration with our teams when we didn't agree, end quote. Zuckerberg now says Facebook should not have compromised its standards, and he's added he's ready to push back if something like this happens again. Now, reading between the lines here, this may be Zuckerberg looking ahead to November and the very real possibility that Donald Trump gets back into office and starts looking for payback for Zuckerberg's Zuckerbucks that helped to fortify the 2020 election. Then, secondly, the billionaire co-founder and CEO of the messaging app Telegram arrested Saturday night at Bourget Airport outside of Paris. Telegram offers end-to-end -end encrypted messaging and allows users to set up channels to send information out quickly to followers. I've got a channel on Telegram. You can find it under the name View from the Bunker. That's titled my podcast. 
can follow me there. I share a lot of news items there. Uh, pa- Pavel Durov was detained by the National Anti-Fraud Office in France over the alleged facilitation of various crimes, including terrorism, narcotics trafficking, and fraud. Why? Well, because he doesn't uh, censor information that's shared on Telegram, which is the appeal to people who use it. Took me a while to get on board. Now I really like Telegram. Durov was born in Russia. He left Russia in 2014 because he refused to comply with demands to shut down opposition party platforms on uh, his VK social media platform, which he has since sold. He's relocated, now lives in Dubai, where Telegram is based. He holds dual citizenship between Dubai and France. Net worth estimated at about $15.5 billion. The Telegram app now has over 900 million active users. He says it should remain neutral and not a player in geopolitics. And that's likely what's going on here. Durov has refused to allow intelligence agencies backdoors into the encrypted messages shared on Telegram. And so he's busted. Topic number three, California dreaming. You'd think that a state with about a $47 billion budget shortfall in 2024 would have uh, some incentive to look for ways to save money. But this is California we're talking about here. A bill that would help undocumented migrants on a path to homeownership has advanced in the state legislature, passed through a Senate Appropriations Committee, all the Democrats on the committee voting unanimously to move it. AB 1840 would amend the California Dream for All Shared Appreciation Loan Program by preventing lenders from denying prospective homeowners based on their immigration status. What this does, this program launched in 2023, gives first-time homebuyers in California a loan of up to 20% of the home's purchase price to be used as a down payment. This bill would effectively allow undocumented migrants, or what we used to call illegal aliens, up to 20% to use as a down payment when buying a home. The loan doesn't accrue interest, require monthly payments. When the main mortgage is refinanced or the house is sold, the borrower pays back the original amount plus 20% of any appreciation. This, of course, assumes that real estate values in California will go up forever, which, as we learned in 2008 with the subprime mortgage collapse, something I can speak to from hard personal experience, doesn't always happen. Of course, if you're a home seller in California, knowing now that first-time buyers all get 20% free money from the state, you just raise your price by 20%. And, of course, this puts more money into circulation in the home buying and selling market, which means prices go up anyway because... More money in circulation means they're worth less relative to the homes. This this is a bad idea, especially for a state that's already struggling to close budget holes. Uh, Topic number two today, white shaming at NASA. Yes, space apparently is the final frontier for anti-racism. Leaked NASA training materials show white employees feel shame because of their skin color and call individualism perfectionism, either or thinking, (laughs) worship of the written word, aspects of white supremacy. Seriously, should we point out that NASA has two astronauts stranded in space right now? Sunita Williams and Barry Wilmore launched into space on June 5th to the International Space Station for what was supposed to be an eight-day mission. We now learn that because of problems with Boeing's Starliner, they won't be coming home until 2025. The eight-day mission has now morphed into an eight-month mission. But hey, they can wait. NASA has important anti-racism work to do. Coming up, the hymn, Amazing Grace, may be good for your heart. Literally. I'll explain next on 5 and 10. Ladies and gentlemen, you can easily and conveniently stream this incredible new film, Void Earth Cataclysm Before Genesis, right now at skywatchtv.com forward slash stream or on the mobile app for immediate access. However, if you'd like to receive your own hard copy on DVD, Skywatch TV is proud to announce the Void Earth Ultra Collection. 
When you order this exclusive collection from the Skywatch TV store, you'll receive the brand new documentary from Defender Investigative Films, Void Earth Cataclysm Before Genesis, along with Dr. Thomas Horn and Reverend Donna Howell's best-selling book, Before Genesis, the unauthorized history of Tohu, Bohu, and the Chaos Dragon in the land before time. These powerful works present astounding revelations like no other, taken directly from the Word of God, the conclusion to the events of Genesis that merges all contributing voices from not only the young and old creationist groups, but the scientific community as well into one balanced and agreeable climax. They reveal precisely how ancient archaeological sites like Gobekli Tepe and the Doorway of the Serpent point irrefutably to an intelligent race of beings here on Earth thriving before the time of Adam and under Lucifer's fallen dominion. They pull back the veil on exactly what the Earth was like during the without form and void era of Genesis 1-2 and so much more, featuring Dr. Michael Lake, Derek Gilbert, Reverend Donna Howell, Gary Stearman, and the late Dr. Thomas Horn in what would become his last documentary appearance ever. But that's not all. You'll also receive 315, the genesis of all prophecy by the legendary Rabbi Eric Walker. This prophetic, convicting, and heart-rending book exposes anti-Semitism as Satan's plan to eliminate the Jews and the catastrophic consequences the world will face if this agenda succeeds. Sold separately, all of these items hold a retail value of $75. Yours now for your donation of only $45, which includes free shipping to all U.S. orders. So don't delay. You can scan the QR code on your screen using the camera app on your phone for instant access to this special opportunity. You can also visit us at skywatchtvstore.com or call 1-844-750-4985 and ask for the Void Earth Ultra Collection now. Item number one today, singing is good for you. Singing certain songs may be even better. Amazing Grace. Seriously, scientists have discovered that singing this hymn for 10 minutes can reverse the effects of heart disease. Not a guarantee, but it could work. Other songs may work as well. As part of this study, they also tested things like the Beatles' Hey Jude, which also showed some positive effects, but to a lesser extent, interestingly enough. Researchers at the Medical College of Wisconsin studied the impact of singing a variety of different songs on the blood vessels of older people with heart disease. And they showed that people who sang Amazing Grace, written in 1772 by clergyman John Newton, showed the biggest improvement in endothelial function. That's a measure of how healthy blood vessels are around the heart. Now, numerous studies have found that singing is good for physical and mental health, but this was the first one to test its effects on blood flow around the heart. They recruited 65 men and women, mostly in their 60s, being treated for heart disease, they got them to sing four songs, and 22%, the most by far of any of the four songs, 22% who sang Amazing Grace saw an improvement in blood flow when they sang that hymn. Isn't that interesting? Science. This week in Skywatch TV, we launch a couple of new programs, actually bringing one back, but the new program is the Donna Howell Show. She is a remarkable and intelligent and impassioned young woman, and she is now speaking out on her own platform, the Donna Howell Show, and we're bringing back Return to Eden, a show focused on health. Why health? Because if you don't feel well, you can't be effective for our king. You find these available right now, Skywatch TV's app, Roku, Apple TV channels. We'll tell you how to get that on your uh, devices in just a moment. But uh, the program this week where Donna and uh, the hosts of Return to Eden talk about the program. So you can watch right now at our website, skywatchtv.com. All of our video content is always there. Keep that in the back of your mind. If we ever disappear from a video sharing platform, skywatchtv.com. You can also check it out right now. Over the air, our broadcast schedule is posted at the website, skywatchtv.com slash channels. Roku or Apple TV, check those out. If you've got a set-top box, add the Skywatch TV channel 
to your device, and all of our video content will be there. You can also catch it over the internet, youtube.com slash at Skywatch Television or rumble.com slash Skywatch TV. Better yet, get our mobile app. Add that to your mobile device, phone or tablet. Carry us around with you because it bypasses the gatekeepers of big tech. All the video content comes directly from the Christian company who's developed the app right to your device, whether it's iOS, Android, or Amazon Kindle Fire phone or tablet. And we've got links to their app stores at our website, skywatchtv.com slash app. In November, Sharon and I plan to return to Israel for another solidarity mission to bear witness to what's happened to that country since last October 7th. God willing, a lot depends on what happens there over the next few weeks. But as of now, it is still on. If you're interested in finding out more, you can go to our website, skywatchtv. Uh, excuse me, gilberthouse.org slash travel, gilberthouse.org slash travel. Follow 5 and 10 online, YouTube, we're at 5 in 10, or uh, X, formerly Twitter, at 5 underscore in underscore 10. And thank you for watching as we keep watch. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Derek Gilbert. This is 5 in 10 from Skywatch TV.